Good afternoon. Good afternoon, And welcome to our feast today. We extend a very special and warm welcome to Jack and Rita Firkenhoff as they celebrate their golden wedding anniversary. Last week we heard about the vineyards and those who work them. Today the readings speak of feast and those who are invited. In faith, the king offers his guests multiple invitations. The second time he sends messengers and said, I have prepared my banquet and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Throughout our lives, God offers many invitations to us to be a part of his kingdom and to be fed at his table. Even though we have been invited, we also know that God honors our free will. If we refuse the invitation to the feast, we won't be forced to join. Today is a good time to ponder over this past year how we have responded to the invitations God has issued in our lives. Thank you for responding yes to coming to this Eucharistic feast today. Together we celebrate. Tonight we are remembering and praying for Harriet Kunz, and tomorrow we pray for Bonnie Harlemant. Let us also remember one of the priests of our archdiocese, Father Joseph Villa, who was 61. He died this week of a heart attack. Our sanctuary light will burn this week in memory of Allie and Anna Walkey. Members of the Faith Formation Committee will meet this Thursday at 4.30 in the Parish Hall. That same evening, the ladies will meet at 7 p.m. to continue their discussion of the drive through turkey dinner on November the 14th. The church will be in use this Friday evening at 6 for the wedding rehearsal of Brent Crabtree and Brooklyn Ronsheim. Their wedding is Saturday at 2.30. You will see in the bulletin that 62 donors have responded to our Ain't No Raffle for an amount of 16,600. So we're well on our way of our goal of 30,000. I again ask that you send in your response before November the 1st. Today we are handing out, um, and you saw them on the table, uh, songs. Um, that uh, you can use for the opening and closing uh, songs. After Mass, if you want to take them home, fine. Otherwise, we will pick them up so that we place new ones in the pews tomorrow. Let us now rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. And with your spirit. Indeed, as we seek the kingdom of God, we can be sure that our Father is inviting us as well. As we open our prayer, let us know that he cares for us and watches over us, always calling us to his kingdom.
Lord Jesus, you came to show us all the way to the kingdom of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to show one another the way. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, fill us again with your life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. pray at all times go before us and follow after us making us always determined to carry out good works for we ask this through our Lord Jesus who lives one God forever and ever Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on that mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. 
He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know to, how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts so that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to the chief priest and elders of the people in parables. He said, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Now some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops. He destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, good and bad alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. 
The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he refused in silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind this man's hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many are invited. These words are from our Gospel this evening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was one of our founding fathers by the name of Benjamin Franklin. I think you know him. Benjamin Franklin said this, He that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. Well, that's, I suppose, what we see in the story, the parable that Jesus tells tonight, once again addressing the chief priests and elders of the people who thought they knew it all, the important ones, the ones who made everyone feel a whole lot littler than them, because they were the ones who knew all about God and what he was about. Well, Jesus knew more than they knew, for he was the Son of God, so one with the knowledge and will of the Father that it was the Father himself, as Jesus would say, speaking to him. <clears throat> and so tonight, Jesus tells this story about a king who invited people. Now we're talking a king here. We're not talking, you know, some minor official. We're talking the top. And when somebody like that invites us, well, we tend to take things kind of seriously. Are we that important? Are we that special? Should I go? What would happen if I don't go? Well, all that comes into play in Jesus' story. But when he sends his messengers out, and the messengers here that Jesus is talking about, the code word, messenger, is the prophets. The prophets all down through the ages who came to the Jewish people and asked them to follow the ways of God, to be a part of his kingdom. They were to be the chosen ones, the very first ones. Not all, but the first ones. Well, some of them, the first ones called, they just didn't want to come. We don't have any reason, they just didn't go. You know, it's kind of a reminder of that story last week about the son who said, you know, I'm not going to go. Well, they said, I'm not going to go, and they didn't go. Well, then the second time, out sends them out. Maybe they just misunderstood. Maybe they just didn't hear. Maybe they just didn't realize how important this is. You know, talk about making excuses. Well, I suppose God would make those kind of excuses because we're all his children and he knows us. Well, these, some, they had plenty of excuses, but not as God would make excuses. No, they had other things to do. They had their business. They had the farms. Talk about, you know, kind of a parable that kind of addresses where we're at here. They had their business in the farms. You know, when Jesus speaks about bringing the message of God, well, they can be brought to farms. They can be brought to businesses. But first, Jesus says, you've got to listen to me. You've got to make my message your priority, and then you can go out and do your business. 
It's like the, these people were saying, well, catch me later. See you later. I got other things to do. I, I, maybe I'll come back or whatever. You know, this maybe doesn't hack it. Either God is important to us or he's not. And this is what Jesus is trying to get across here. Who gets listened to? Who is the important person in my life? Well, some of them even killed the messengers, even killed the prophets. Of course, Jesus would be one of those as well. They'd kill him too because they just didn't want to hear what he had to say. They didn't want to follow the laws and teachings of God to love our neighbor as we love our God. Well, it says the king became enraged. Well, the king, of course, is supposed to be God, but God doesn't really get enraged. God is always loving. God is always kind. God can never, ever change. And to get enraged and mad, you have to change your tune. We do it all the time. God doesn't get that way. But what Jesus is referring to is, okay, if there was a king that you got invited to, what would your king do? And of course, he asked them that a couple of weeks ago. Tell me, what would happen? Well, the king would burn all their villages up, and the king would punish them and throw them into prison, and on and on and on. Well, good thing God is not that way. That God's invitation will come to us as many times as it takes. We've got to stop making the excuses. We've got to stop seeing other things as more important than God. So that the kingdom of God can be brought here on this earth. Yes, the kingdom of God, we will know eventually when we leave this earth. But it sure would be nice if we could know some of it right now when we're here on this earth. People getting along. People respecting each other. People looking after each other's needs. People loving each other as brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of a God who is totally loving and caring for us always. Yes, don't put that on the back burner. I think it's something our world needs very much now. Then maybe we could find that peace and that security and all those things we say we seek here on this earth. Where do we find them? We find them in our God. And indeed, as Jesus offers this to us as the voice of God himself, well, so we can be assured we are always the many called to his kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand as once again we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, it came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets, 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. For Pope Francis, as he challenges the church to live more simply, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations that are overwhelmed by outbreaks of infectious disease and epidemics, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fuller celebration in the Eucharist, that we may draw strength for our daily lives from our communion with Christ and one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper respect for human life, particularly for the terminally ill, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from natural disasters, that God may stir the hearts of many to assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick in our families and among our friends, that they may be hopeful in the midst of their illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, especially for Jack and Rita Ferkenhoff, as they give thanks to God for 50 years of marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been welcomed to the banquet feast of heaven, especially Harriet Kunz and Bonnie Harlemert, that their souls might find refreshment forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, may we seek your kingdom always in our lives, bringing it about for our world to know forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, these prayers of your faithful people, along with our offerings, that through these acts of devotedness to you, we may all pass over to the glory of heaven. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives by God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, for you are the Lord of heaven and earth. For through Jesus you created our world, and now you govern all things in your harmony. For you have given us Jesus once again made flesh, and he speaks words to us, calling us 
to follow him. For Jesus is the way that leads to you, a truth that sets us all free, a life that fills us with gladness. Through Jesus, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family. Therefore, now and for ages unending, we join angels and saints in heaven praising you as we sing. And to be glorified, O God, you so love the human race that you walk with each of us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is Jesus present in our midst, for we are gathered by his love. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body, the blood, of Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and gave you thanks. He then confessed your unending mercy for all of us. Then he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Jesus Christ, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have now seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. Look with favor on the sacrifice of your church as we once again see the very sacrifice of Jesus for us all. Grant that we all may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of Jesus. By our partaking of this holy mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of Jesus. Confirm us in this bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and with priests and deacons and all of your people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of these times by the light of our faith, may constantly devote ourselves to the service of the kingdom of God. 
Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring everyone the good news of salvation. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you have known. Admit their spirit this day to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection of our bodies at the end of time, give us all the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly time is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, living with you forever. For there, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Maurice, and all of the saints, together we shall praise and exalt you in the name of Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray once again to the Father of us all who keeps inviting us to his kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Always peace and unity among all of God's children is a sign of the kingdom of God. Perhaps a little sign for each other. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ? Amen. The body of Christ? The body of Christ? Amen. The body of Christ? 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 I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. See He will bring you his light and his peace. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. The of Christ. Seek the face the of the Lord and look for Him. He will bring you His joy and His glory. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you Jack and Rita will now stand to receive a blessing from the church by Father Bill. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made men and women so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Jack and Rita so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. And so, may God, the Almighty Father, give you joy. May the only Son of God have mercy on you and help you in good times and in bad. May the Holy Spirit always fill your hearts with his love. And so I ask that Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's recognize their witness to the church.
That should be good for another 50 years. <laughs> Let us all now stand. We ask your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with this food from heaven, which comes from the most holy body and blood of Jesus, that you may make us all sharers in his divine nature, for he lives and reigns with you now forever and ever. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I wish you a very pleasant evening. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I just have one announcement. If I could have the three of them step out front here, please. Us three? Yeah, uh -huh. well, who else? <laughs> well, I guess there isn't any other three. Yeah, all three. <laughs> the second Sunday of October is Clergy Appreciation Day, which is tomorrow. So on this weekend, we recognize Sister Shirley, Father Bill, and Father John. Your lives of commitment, service, and love of God, the church, and us are beautiful examples of God's love. We would like to say thank you. We are blessed to have you. Please join me in showing your appreciation. You can go back now. Uh, oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. 